How's it going guys? So this morning we were able to wrap up uh, the last of our testing on the dyno over at JP Performance of the race ported intake on a stock header only LS3. Um, <clears throat> if you've been following my stories and stuff, uh, you know, we were curious to see what, uh, if any gains were there to be had with a ported intake on uh, a stock car being that the stock cam um, is so small it's just not very big and it doesn't move a whole lot of air but when you look at a lot of other companies that sell intakes and all this stuff um, you know a lot of them act like you can just bolt on power uh, even when a car is stock so we wanted to see you know if, if that's really the case uh, now if, if you have followed me on social media and stuff like that you've seen what I've done with a lot of my ported LS3 intakes they have all shown uh, good gains on LS3 engines from stock cubes to slightly bigger ones uh, more cubic inches uh, but all of them were cammed engines and all of them had pretty healthy cams so obviously when you have a camshaft uh, you're gonna get you're gonna need more airflow you're gonna have more airflow velocity and so the car the engines gonna respond more to airflow modifications where the stock cam by the manufacturer you know it's it's more based for emissions and mileage and uh, even though the cars perform really well stock it's not what we consider a performance camshaft so what we did uh, just to kind of backtrack a little bit you can go back on my YouTube channel or, or look on my Instagram page and you'll see that first we got a baseline on the car with the stock um, intake uh, the only modification I had done was ported the throttle body but I I don't think that will give you huge gains that's more of a of a, of a throttle response kind of modification but anyway uh, that was it just and the car has a cold air intake and headers that's all uh, now the car was tuned uh, probably two years ago if I if I recall correctly uh, but I had done some mods minor mods but enough to change a few things in the calibration uh, over the last two years so when we put on the dyno we did have to make a couple of tweaks but the car actually performed really well now you can go back and look at the videos excuse me but long story short um, even in literally 111 degree weather on the dyno the car put down 416 real horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque and I'll show you the the dyno graph in just a bit so uh, very solid numbers because my calculations had it at 418 to 420 to the rear wheels and I was able to do that with some software that I have that calculates uh, my injector information my fuel and airflow information and it'll it'll do the math and give you a ballpark where you should be in power so that car, if we were to have dynoed it on a cool day, I'm pretty sure it would be north of 420. So I'm very happy for just a header only LS3. Uh, the car is very strong. So the only thing that happened after that dyno day was I drove the car home. It sat in the driveway a couple days until uh, I swapped out the ported intake. That was it, the same stock ported throttle body uh, I didn't want to use a, a big 102 just yet. I wanted to see how it did with just the intake manifold. And uh, long story short, we from my driveway where I installed the intake, all we did was drive back to the shop. So eight miles one way, eight miles back. Uh, I had the battery disconnected at home. So when we got to the dyno, the next time, um, the computer had only seen in terms of fuel trims like if I had been driving for eight miles so there much there wasn't much info there we did a couple of pulls that night unfortunately 
we didn't have the proper laptop with us to look at everything tuning wise but the car was down on power quite a bit actually uh, it made 377 and like 340 something foot pounds of torque so a huge loss but we knew something was up so we, we waited and today we hit it again we had the proper software HP tuners the right laptop we data logged everything and we saw that the ported intake was introducing so much air that we had to rescale the math and as soon as we rescaled the math the horsepower shot right back up to 413 horsepower and I'm about to pull up the dyno graph right now so I can show you guys what it looks like but um, it made 413 horsepower but we were still down on torque quite a bit like you're about to see uh, now we could have kept tuning on the car we could have leaned it out a little bit more and actually added timing and the horsepower probably would have gone up anywhere from 5 to 10 horsepower I'm guessing um, but you'll see right now the torque was so far off that I didn't think we'll ever get the torque back so instead of wasting time and tune on the car let's just stop and I'm gonna put the, the stock intake back on because uh, you're gonna tune just to get back uh, to where you were or be slower it's not worth it at that point right why even do the modification so anyway let me show you the graph so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and then I'll explain to you why we got the results that we got all right so here is the dyno graph and you can see uh, based on the dates and the color of the graphs the blue graph is the run uh, the pull that we did 10 days ago 95 2020 and the car made uh, 416.6 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque and today um, is when it did uh, 400 and 13 horsepower and look at that 348 foot-pounds of torque 52 foot-pounds of torque loss now this can be quite confusing when you look at it now first of all well, let's talk horsepower first before we start talking about the torque so here's the horsepower with the ported intake um, so as you can see immediately from the get-go the the stock intake is making more horsepower this this looks like <laughs> when I was comparing my ported intake to like uh, the the BTR and some of the other ones where was my ported one on top on this one it, it's the uh, the stock one that's on top and and I'll explain to you guys why in just a bit the the only positive thing that I saw about this power curve now this 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 power curve is low because the torque is low look how flat that torque is so you're gonna get a flat horsepower curve if you have a flat torque curve so it just goes straight up the only good thing about it is this this here is 6500 rpm as you can see the ported intake is still pulling even with a stock cam so with the stock intake it's done right at 6000 right here right at 6000 rpm it's done it holds it from you know 5800 to about 61 62 uh, it actually holds it pretty good then it dies off that's why guys usually shift uh, on the LS3 at 6500 rpm anyway the ported one here uh, it shows you why it shines on cammed cars because you know those cam cars that push the, the RPM band up the power band up the intake is still pulling so if it's still pulling and making power up there why did it lose so much why look at this 
the 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 torque from 3000 rpm barely even moved for the entire run i had never seen that before and i was puzzled at the beginning because it's a stock ported intake i do not touch the runners and the runner length is usually what what kind of dictates this curve so i was like if i did not touch the runners how is it that this is so flat i just i couldn't get it i mean the stock one just outperformed it from the beginning now granted we could have done a little more tuning on the car but we we were not going to find 52 foot pounds of torque so i said let's let's not waste each other's time uh you know my, but my buddy george was, was helping me at, at jb we said let's put the the old tune or the the tune the prior tune back on the car put the stock intake back on the car and get back to where we were before with a 420 horsepower car so now let's let's say uh, let's talk about why it lost so much right peak power it's it's there and and, it, and if as you can see you keep pulling it probably would have made a bit more uh than the than the stock intake but let's talk about that torque curve and what i found to be the cause all right so threw us for a loop right we're so used to seeing i'm so used to seeing my ported intake make horsepower on just about everything we've tested it on how can it lose to the very part that I modified? Well, it came down to the throttle body and not because it was ported. You see on my race port LS3 intakes, I completely open up the, the opening of the intake. And I do this so that we can use a 102 or bigger millimeter throttle body so the opening usually measures about 106 to 108 millimeters wide so uh, nobody else does that there's other shops that port the ls3 intake but they don't open it up that much but we wanted to use the 102 throttle bodies and that's why i started doing that now when the cars we've tested it on all had 102s. Uh, at HPS on the on the engine dyno, it had a 102 throttle body. Uh, the Red C6 that you guys saw, uh, we did a video not long ago on the dyno that had a 102 throttle body. So all of them had a 102. What's the difference then with the 90 millimeter that would cost you so much torque? Well, that's a big difference a 90 millimeter opening in front of a 108 millimeter opening so basically basically what's happening is that you have vacuum inside of your intake and as a throttle blade opens that vacuum is sucking that air and you get that flow of air but that air goes through that 90 millimeter opening and all of a sudden, it has it has to expand up to 108 and fill up the intake. With a stock cam, since it doesn't move that much air, it came down to a loss of airflow velocity. Um, that ex that expansion of going from a 90 millimeters to 108 made that air lose a whole lot of velocity so now the engine instead of getting a ram air effect with that air rushing past the throttle body it's slowed down and now the engine has to use uh, if you want to say power but it has to use more effort into drawing that air into the combustion chambers so if we would have used a 102 throttle body the difference in the openings are much, much smaller 
therefore you don't lose as much velocity so the key is if you're if with my ported intake uh, the race port intake uh, I would say you have to use the 102 um, the 90 with us where if we're talking stock cam here it just does not move enough air now obviously a bigger camshaft it's opening the valves more it's opening them quicker you're getting a, a lot more air flowing in through the engine at all RPM ranges. And so that airflow, that velocity is going to be there. And if you use a 102 uh, millimeter throttle body, you're not going to lose that velocity. And the intake's going to work just like we've seen it perform so well on every other test we've done. But it just comes down to the stock cam just does not move enough air uh, and it doesn't need that much intake it doesn't need that much of an opening you're just slowing the air down it's breathing just fine with the stock intake so at the end of the day if you have a stock LS3 the stock cam stock heads uh, don't touch don't touch the intake it's completely fine there's nothing in the aftermarket that is going to outperform it on a stock setup. Now the, the ported throttle body, um, I did feel a much better throttle response. Um, I like the way the car feels, you get on it and it just moves. So to me, that is a, 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 an investment that's worth it, porting the stock throttle body. Um, Plus, you know, it, it still remains 90 millimeters. So you're helping the air go in smoother. Um, you're not without decreasing the velocity of the air. So maybe you guys are starting to understand that now. So making horsepower is all about velocity, airflow velocity. Engines are just big air pumps. So the faster you can get air in, the more air you can get into the combustion chamber. The more fuel you can use um, and make more horsepower now there were other little tuning things with the intake that I can get get into with you but at the end of the day it doesn't matter um, it would have been down on torque it, that's just too much because when we did the that last pull this morning everything looked good the fueling was slightly rich but still okay no knock uh, the car pulled good it sounded strong uh, it just had lost a lot of torque. Just that velocity is not there. I will say this though, when we were first tuning the car with the ported intake, you can tell that something was up in the lower RPM ranges because, well first the math scaling was off, but it just has no airflow velocity. So that engine, it felt like it, it struggled a little more to rev up and then once the RPMs picked up then the velocity of the air starts to move maybe at 5,000 RPM but by then the cam's going to be done in another thousand RPM it's not going to make power so uh, we would feel that the car would and then it would ramp up towards the top of the run but by then you killed a lot of power so that's what we found and I don't mind telling you guys because I don't pump up my products um, every car part is designed to go with a specific combination and this is no difference um, you know it's it's not just bolt something on make horsepower and drive away um, and even when you do bolt on stuff you want to tune the car you want to see where it's at you want to see uh, how things change even uh, like a ram air uh, cold air intake can change the the math readings and you might have to tune that to get the most out of it so you know everything takes tweaking uh, but that's what we wanted to see so um, if you want to use a, a ported or if you want me to port your LS3 intake uh, I would say make sure that you have a camshaft uh, because not only will you might not see you might see horsepower gains if you tune it but you might see torque losses 
Um, so, I, you know, you can advertise this. We could have tuned it and made horsepower. And you can say, oh, this intake makes horsepower. And you're not lying. But you don't show that where you've lost power and torque all along, all, all along the curve. So basically, you know, it, it mirrors what we've seen when testing my ported intake against the, the short runner intakes that, you know, they kill velocity too because they have these shorter runners. And so you see that. And this is the same kind of story now, except instead of runners killing the velocity, it's the, the difference between a 90 millimeter throttle body and a 102 millimeter throttle body that's killing the velocity. Now that leaves one question though, if I would have used a 102 throttle body, how different would the results have been? Uh, and that's a good question. I, I don't know. Honestly, um, it would have made a big difference because you don't lose that velocity and you get the air in there quicker. The engine, you know, a lot of variables there. Uh, I think it would have made up a lot of the torque that was lost, but you still have a camshaft that just can't move the air. So I think the losses would not have been as much, but I think um, anytime you go big, you're gonna lose velocity and you need the, the throttle body and intake to be in combination with the camshaft to keep everything flowing and happy. So yeah, maybe it would have made a little more torque and power, uh, maybe a, quite a bit more with a bigger throttle body, but um, from what I saw on the graph, it wasn't enough to spend the time to figure that out on a, stack, on a stock cam car. Um, and if you do get a cam, like everybody does for performance, we already know what does work, so we're good. We wanted to find out anyway um, it is what it is there's the info maybe you guys are waiting for sorry this is a long video but I wanted to really explain um, what had happened so you guys get to, to understand how things work anyway hope you guys are doing well and uh, we'll talk soon about another test we've done I'm gonna post another video uh, this is the brisk spark plugs that have been on the car so I have another video I'm gonna post where we look into it a little bit better. Uh, these have been in the car for, I don't know, maybe uh, a couple months now. Um, so far, they've been running good, no complaints. Uh, when we did the power pulls, 416 horsepower, these were in the car, um, been running great. So watch the video where I talk about the spark plugs. Anyway, see you guys soon, hopefully with another cool test to come.